Let me read, you watch me, 
Please watch me, please, and I'll sign, I'll sign to you, okay? Revelation chapter 22, starting with verse 6. The Bible said, And he said unto me, These saints are faithful and true. The word of God is faithful and true. You can believe every word from the Bible. Believe it, okay? And so he goes on to say, and said, And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Must be shortly done. Will come. The Bible's true. The Word of God is true. No lie. Everything is true in the Word of God. Understand that. Have no doubts about the Bible. Okay? And go on down in verse 7. It says, Behold, behold, I come quickly. Wow. Could come today. Come on. Amen? Could come today. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the, the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things, and I heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship, to worship before the feet of the angel which shew, showed me these things. And then said he, the angel, unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, fellow servant, and of the brethren, the prophets, and them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Let me stop right there. We have a lot of people who are worshiping the wrong things. Even some Christians are worshiping the wrong thing. Amen? Amen? So we need to just worship God. Now, now he said, and he said it to me, he said, seal not the sayings of this prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand, ready to come. He that is unjust, means not saved, okay, let him be unsaved still. Okay. And he said, the, he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Mm. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy. You understand that? Mm. So God says, time's coming. You better get ready. If you're not saved, you'll stay unsaved. You will stay not saved. If you're saved, you will stay saved. Amen? What? Well, you're going to heaven. All right, now. Verse 12 says, And behold, he says, Behold, I come quickly. Blink my eye. We're out of here. God is coming back. Jesus is coming back for his children. Amen? And he said, And my, my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. You want more blessings? Start serving God. Amen. More and more. <coughs> Boy, thank you for that, 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 that second Thessalonians. What was it? Chapter 4, verse 2. One verse four. I mean, chapter 4. Uh, chapter 1, verse 4. Oh, good. Yeah, I can brag on this church. You can brag on this church. All day. That word glory means to brag. Well, I see. Well, that was a wonderful statement for me to say. This church is a blessing. It's a ble I'm telling you, I've traveled a lot of places. I'm not seeing that many deaf in church. Most churches have deaf ministries. I and I'm, I, I love interpreters. I love it. But it's hard for deaf. Sometimes we overhead interpret and it goes over your head. We can't stop and explain what we're talking about. See? And so I'm terrible. I'm bragging on his church. 
Amen. Yes, sir. You people. So anyway, so, so he says, he said, they that may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the uh, the city. For without are dogs and and sorcerers and uh, whoremongers <coughs> and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and make it the lie. He said, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whoso will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add, are you watching me? If any man should add unto these things, God shall, take, shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Verse 20 said, He which testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. But one said, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen and amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for the privilege to be here today. Be with my people also. I am very, very pro-deaf. And Lord, I love the deaf people. And I know, God, you love deaf people also. So Lord, I'm so happy these people are here this morning. Lord, I pray that you help me to preach thy word that they may understand. Maybe someone here is not saved. Maybe not know for sure to save. But we have a warning here. In the Bible, it has a warning for us. We have some hidden sin. It's warning to get rid of. It. And Lord, just bless us this morning. Thank you for your word. So powerful and so good to us. Your word. Bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There's not one part of the Bible here that's more important than the other. It's like you ask, uh, is uh, gas or a tire in a car important? Yeah. It's important. You have to have the boat before they call a run, right? So, so, so it's interesting to notice that the final uh, message here that we have here, this is the final message that God has told us in Revelation chapter 22. It's interesting. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, uh, maybe you went on a trip. Maybe you went on a trip and you, you kind of stay your children. Be careful. Uh, write me when you go. Uh, make sure you have some nice, clean underwear in case you have racks. You know, you haven't told you that, but you, your mom and daddy told you that? Ah. Uh, see, my says, yeah, I told them, warning, they want, why did they tell it? To warn us, right? Because we're going on a trip. Be careful. Don't meet strange people. Call me when you get there. You remember those stories? Oh, I remember my mom and dad doing. I was 18 years old in the Navy. My mom said, You better write me. You better make sure you're clean and everything. 18 years old, I'm out of the house. Don't make a difference. Okay? So he told me what to do. So, and he said, Don't, don't, don't talk to strangers. Gotta be careful. Now it's awful. Children talk to strangers when they just steal them, go away, kill them, or whatever. Right? So we have to be careful. So it's it's like it's like when we say, All right, "This is the last time I'm telling you." Here the Bible says, "Jesus, said, this is the last time I'm telling you because I come." He may come this afternoon. Hallelujah, I'm ready, amen? amen. Maybe tomorrow. Amen. Maybe a hundred years from now. 
but he's coming back. Amen? So, so I see I see eight things here in the scripture that makes the greatest and the final, final plea that God gives to man. First of all, I see, number one I see, it is a faithful plea. Faithful. Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. He said, he said, and he said unto me, these sayings, the Bible, these sayings are what? What? They are faithful and true. We have the Word of God. It's true. The Word of God is true. It's no mixed up. It's not confusing. This is the true Word of God. We have it right here. So he's telling us, he's telling us to be faithful and true. Understand that the Bible is true. Okay? So he says, it's being faithful, what? Faithful means to be full of faith. Full, faithful means to be full of faith. Okay? It means to really trust God. There's some things in the world we can't trust now. We can't, we can't trust the politicians. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, we, we can't trust some businessmen. Amen. 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 We can't. Uh, sometimes wives can't even trust their husbands nowadays. And there's some women or men can't trust their wives. Amen. Amen. Uh, we see that. Children can't trust parents. And vice versa. Parents can't trust children. Today's awful times today. Who can we trust? God. Jesus. Amen. Uh, I'm on. There's some preacher you can't trust. Ooh. There's some preachers are preaching for money, not for the glory of God. You see the big time church and church on TV? Huh? What's high up? Wilson? You have the power. Now the can is after you have the power within you. <laughs> million dollars a year by selling his books. That's all. A lot of people, a lot of people in the church, look at it. He never talks about salvation. Talks about uh, uh, prosperity. You you give $10, I promise you, God will give you $1,000 back. Oh, it's so wonderful. Makes me sick. When he stands before God, and God said, why did you have many people come to your church, but you never told them the truth? Sheep. Goats, 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 goats thousands. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 7, it really bothers me. really bothers me. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 says, the way is wide. Okay? It leads to destruction, and there will be many that go in. Now, I, I just preach the right word of God, okay? Understand, there's a lot of religions that don't believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, for example, the Catholic religion, okay? They don't, they, they think he's a teacher, okay? And you have to go through the priest to get right. The priest can't save you. The priest can't make you right. The priest can't do anything. So you know how many cat in the world? How many? Over 400 billion people. What? Lost and will die and go into hell. Mormons? 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 What about them? Oh, the baby have two or three wives? Woo! 
I couldn't even wash my warm wife, let alone four or five. Amen. So here, they believe, they believe that stuff. Jehovah Witnesses, oh, I was talking to a Jehovah Witness in Florida. A very intelligent man. Almost like Todd. Very experienced. <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk to him. But I, I do not like to, the Bible. The Bible sells the truth. I don't have to discuss it, argue over it. The Bible, the Word of God is true. I told him, I said to him, I said to him, talk about Revelation 21, talk about going into fire. He said, oh, no, no, no. That's uh, symbolic. I mean, it's a picture of fire. I looked, I said, no, 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 no. Fire is real. Hell, 21 tells us about being cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Oh, no. That's a picture. And then he tells me, he said, I explained about Jesus going to the cross and dying for our sins. No. No man could go to the cross and die on the cross for my sin. No man. I said, but Jesus wouldn't die just man. He was God also. Amen. 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 Oh, he said, oh. and then I said, I, I was tired talking with him. I said, I thought, I said, I hope you get saved. I'll see you in heaven someday. He said, There's no heaven. What? No heaven. Right here is heaven. That's what they believe. Now, oh, I don't know how many Jehovah's Witnesses in the world, but they're going to die. They're going to die and go to hell. Matthew chapter 7, 13 said, Wide is the way to destruction, and there be many that go through. <coughs> and then verse 14 said, Praise the Lord. He said, Narrow is the way. There be few go. Few. Few that will go that way. Scary. Scary, Pastor. We need to be busy. We need to teach the right doctrine so those people can understand and receive Christ and know for sure they're going to go to heaven. I asked a lot of people, you say, that's my my little joke. I said, hey, you say, I've asked Terry that before. I said, Terry, you still say, yes. <laughs> but some people, I asked, are you say, yeah, I'm a good man. I said, yeah. Hey, let me ask you, you ever, uh, you ever, you ever tell a lie? Yeah. <laughs> I said that. Ever steal anything? No. You ever steal an apple or somebody had to take it? I guess so. You see? You see? So we need to know for sure we're saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need to know for sure. Narrow. Well, that really bothers me. I've been now almost six, but it really bothers me. And I'm preaching, I think I'm putting, I'm putting stuff in. My church down we have a hearing church over there. We're separated from hearing church, like here. But once a month, I go over for the Lord's table, Lord's Supper. We go, my dad would go over. I interpret for them. Some of that pastor leaves, he calls me to preach. So I'm working on a good message on Matthew 7, 13, 14. It blows my mind about how many people are going to die and go to hell because the Bible's real. It says many, many will be destroyed. Many. So anyway, now where was I? Where was I? So I'm so I'm glad I have a good God. Amen. 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 I, I'm glad. I'm glad we have a book. This book is faithful to us. We read it. We study it. We learn from it. It helps us get saved. It helps us. Go along in life. It helps us do everything right here. We have the Word of God. Amen. So here also, I'm glad that the promises of God are faithful. God's promises are faithful. Amen. You can you can trust God's Word. Let me tell you something. I've learned in the past 41 years. I've learned one thing. I watch me. You put it in your head. Trust God completely. Trust man discreetly. D e c r e t l e y. Man will fail you every time. 
I love you, brother. I love you. You can't put all your faith on him. Hey, David, I love you, brother, but I can't put my faith in you full. I can't. Because he's human, we will fail and let you down. Trust me, it's happened to me. I trusted two men, strong Christians, should have been Christians. Messed me up twice. Right. Now I've learned. Trust God. <coughs> Remember, copy me, copy me. Trust wow. God wow. completely. Wow. Trust wow. man discreetly. Wow. Don't forget that. Keep that in your heart, mind, okay? So, so we have to do that. And this is one of the things about promise of God. He will always keep his promise. Always. He never fails us. Never fails. Some of these songs we sing, man, if you just analyze the words in the songs, God is real. He's faithful, amen? So I want to tell you this one, one thing about some promises of God. He will always keep it. Now, man will never keep promises to you. He can't because man is still a sinner. Amen. Amen. I'm a sinner just saved by grace. Amen. I can still sin. You can still sin. Amen. <laughs> so here I want to I want to give you what are what are some of them uh, promised? Well, he's promised to save sinners. Look at them. Well, you don't have to look. I was kind of slow for you. First Timothy chapter one. In verse 15, he said, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. On to Paul. He said, I'm chief. Also, he will what? He will sanctify us, sanctify us holy, holy. He said in 1 Thessalonians, Chapter 5, 23, 24. He said, And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole, all spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blame, blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Amen. Amen. So he's promised. He's promised not to put more on us than we can take. So we have a lot of pressure. Pastor, we have a lot of pressure. You have a lot of pressure. But God said, I won't put more on you than you can handle. And by the way, he handles it anyways. So don't worry about it. Don't, don't let stress pull you down. Don't let, don't let things pull you down. Let God handle your life. Amen? Amen. 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 So, we need to know that. And, and Paul, well, just, his promises are true. Amen? His promise. His promise is true. He said, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. You can write that. 1 Corinthians, see, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. He said, There... Have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Things happen. It's uh, things happen to us. It's common. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. He will give you some tempted you can't handle. He's there to help you. He will help you. Whatever you, you man, I, my finances way down. Well, start tithing. Uh, my, my I, I can't go out so <laughs> and I, I'm scared. Go trust God. One thing I, I hate dogs. Who have dogs? Uh, I'm sorry, but I hate dogs. <laughs> my experience goes so many over in West Virginia. They have. Uh, coon dogs, uh, German <laughs> shepherd dogs, big dogs, crazy dogs. I think they eat wild honey or something. I don't know what's meant. But I, I go up the door. 
paycheck. Dog won't buy. I've been here before. I said, fine. Right, go ahead. Well, you got to have. What happened? Dog coming behind me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, my heart. I thought he was going to bite my leg off. Oh. And one time I got in the house a little. Uh, Spanish dog, what you want, 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 what you and bit me on my ankle. Oh! Oh, and he went over. What happened to my little baby? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> So Jesus told us that the truth would set set you free. Now, this morning I were last night I was talking to uh, help me Tracy. <laughs> talking to him last night. I said, Jim, Deficit. I can't understand the Bible. I don't understand the Bible. When you are in bondage. You can't understand nothing. The Bible said, I set you free, free in deep. That means you're, now you have an understanding. You're free so you can under, understand the Bible. And some people say, well, I don't understand the Bible. Well, maybe you're not saved yet. See, God opens your brain and puts in the good thing and you understand it when you had your money. You can't learn that. So he said, I set, I set you free. I make you free and you will be free. When you're free, you can understand. Yeah. Amen? So you can understand. So how, how do you know the truth? Well, to know, to know, uh, uh, to know Jesus is to what? Is to know the truth. He says in John chapter 14, verse 6, says, For I am the way, what? And the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. See? So plain. So, what's that, people? Oh, I, I understand. I understand. No, you don't understand because you're still not saved yet. Amen? So, to know Jesus, to know the truth. He's the very, very part of truth. He is truth, okay? And just as the devil has no truth in him, okay, there's no false in Christ Jesus. Jesus is all honestly and true. The devil has a bunch of false lies to you. The devil's slick. The Bible said he's like a born <laughs> lion. Seeking, walk around, seeking who he may devour. The devil knows your ways. The devil knows your every hair on your head. He knows when you have sin was hidden or not hidden. The devil knows, and he will attack you on that way and make you so messed up you know what you're doing. But you continue to trust Jesus. There's no lie in Jesus. Jesus, pure and true, the Word of God. Amen? So, so there's a, only three places in all the Bible here that talks about grace and truth. Found. Uh, John chapter 1, 14 through 17. He said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of 
as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and what? Truth. Full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, he said, This was he whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness huh, have all we received, and grace for grace, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Mm. For by grace are you saved, through faith, that not is yourself, lest any man should boast. Amen? Mm. So it's Jesus. He has the truth. We have, we have a lot of death have no clue about Jesus. I met one deaf man, old oh, 30, I think mean, 35, 36 years old in West Virginia. Real Mountain William. I mean, hillbilly. <laughs> I met him and I said, we got to talk, I said, Dad, you know Jesus Christ, you're a personal savior? He said, who? I said, do you know Jesus Christ, you're a personal savior? I don't know Jesus Christ. 36 years old. Death. Who tell him? Nobody. His family. They don't care. I travel. I go to, to the islands. Death have no clue about Jesus Christ. No one's telling them. No one's telling the truth. I have a friend in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in Africa. Right? Africa. I have a friend in Africa. Chris, you know, Chris, Chris over there, he said, it's hard. Deaf have no clue about Jesus Christ. The truth. They have no, What's going to happen to them? They're going to die and go to hell if we don't tell them. Amen? So it's the grace. It's grace and, and grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. And the second, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay? John chapter 4 Verse 23, the KJV, okay? But the hour cometh, and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh, seeketh such a worship, such to worship him. And God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We must worship in spirit and in truth. Okay? So here, here, third thing, this book is the truth. Again, John chapter 17, 17, the Bible said, sanctify them through thy truth. Through thy truth. Thy word is true. There's no false in the word of God. No false things. Yes, All is true. Yes, God said, you're going to die when you die, if you're not received Christ, you die, you will go to hell. Period. There's no escape from it. This is the last letter he's telling us. He's warning us to be ready because he's coming back someday, shortly. Amen? Amen. All right. So, so it's the true. Here, for the church of the Lord is a true uh, a holder. He said, 1 Timothy chapter 3, 15. He said, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave, behave thyself in the house of God. And let me stop there. <laughs> There's some churches don't behave right in the house of God. Boy, they have been. Now some churches have dancing. Right there. Big skirt. Oh, dancing. What is that? That's an <laughs> idol worship. Amen. That's not worshiping God. It's false worship. And then you have, then you have everybody the church is doing different things to, uh, to please you and not giving you the truth. We have the truth. And sometimes the truth can hurt. Amen? Amen. The truth can hurt, but we have to receive it. We have to accept it. The truth. The Word of God never hurts you. The Word of God always to help you. A lot of people don't understand that. I stand and preach. Your pastor stand and preach the truth. 
and people criticize and get mad at the preacher, get mad. It's not me. God's word. You get mad at God. I dare you. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, so it's the word is truth. He said. He said. He said we ought to behave ourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and and a ground of the truth. We have the truth here. Amen. So there's a way to hold the truth right and wrong. Okay. And the right way. Now watch. It's Second Timothy. Chapter 2, 15. This is the right way to uh, show. Okay, He said, the Bible said, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See? As long as I preach from the Bible, I'm giving you truth. Amen. Amen. I get away from the Bible. I'm not preaching the Word of God. I'm not teaching the Word of God. I'm not telling you the truth. When I leave from the Bible, if I stay in the Bible, I'm telling you it's God's Word, not my Word. Amen? Can I say again, thank God for 25 years preaching the Word of God. Some of you, I know, didn't like it, but you need to receive it. You need to accept it because it's going to help you. Mm. Well, I always preach to me about that. But, hey, get right. That's all. It's easy to confess. Easy to confess. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Help me on my big mouth. Bye, 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 bye. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. I'm a, boy, I'm a bad, bad stuff. Help me, Lord. And guess what? Lord says, He'll say, no, I'm not going to pardon you. I'm not. He won't do that. He loves you if you've been saved. Now, if you're not saved, that's a different story. Until you get saved, God lives your prayers. Amen. Before you're not saved, He won't listen to your uh, different prayer. He won't listen to you. He won't. One thing He'll listen. Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please save me. That He lives to that. And from then on, He lists all your prayers. Amen. And a lot of Christians. I pray for it all the time. Nothing happened. Well, why are you not saved? Woo! Amen. Amen. So, there's a right way. And then there's a wrong way. Look over in Romans chapter 1, 18. The Bible says, for the wrath, W-R-A of wrath, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Woo! Amen? So there's a wrong way. There's a right way and a wrong way. 30. I see here in verse 7, 12, and 20, it talks about the important plea. Look at verse 7. Revelation 22. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophets of this book. When you keep the word of God, you have blessings. You have blessings. Amen. You receive blessings all the time. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Three times in this passage, look at verse 12. Right. Verse 12, he said, And behold, I come quickly. I come quick. Oh, he said, Belong. That book's been many years, over 2,000 years saying that. He's coming back quick. I don't know when, but he's coming back. The main point is he is coming back. Maybe tonight, tomorrow, next month, 100 years from But he's coming back. Man, he's coming back. He's coming back. Also in in verse 20, you see what he says? He said, He which testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. I come quickly. So it's an important plea from Jesus said, Hey, I'm coming quickly. You better be ready. Amen? 
You better start serving God. You better start being kind of church fan. You better start praying. You need to do it so many. You better start doing it. And first, you better make sure you're faithful. Because he said, I come quickly. That's a warning from God's word. Amen. Three times in this past, the word of God gives us an, an important plea. Tell us. And not most people think he's talking about the chronology of time. He's, he's, he's ordering, ordering the occurrences. He's telling us what's going to happen now. Now, he says, he says, come. And when in fact, he's talking about what? The fact that when he does come, he will be quick coming. He's not going to come. Beep, beep. Wait two or three days. Uh -uh. Beep, beep. He's coming. Blink an eye. We're out of here. We're out of here. We're out of here. Amen. You going with me? You going with me? I'm at Terry gone. He be gone. I'll be here. Terry. I have a Russian lady in my church. She's 82 years old. You know nothing about sign language. Deaf ass. Don't know nothing. So I talk by lessons and I transmit from English to Russian. Oh, she loves it. She's a tall lady. What size tall? <coughs> Joseph, me, me, you launch. Out of the Whoa! <laughs> she was in the uh, Olympics, Olympics for the deaf. Russia traveled all the way. She had, oh, bad as gold. And she, right, she had this, this, this. Yeah, this, she signed, did, and then shot put, and running, and jumping, and pole voting. She said, yeah, I did have a picture of it. Wow. She's proud of that, sweet lady. As you still, you know, Jesus. Yeah. Last Wednesday night, took her, I picked her up, took her home. Church, my van. She said, Thank you, friend. F A N F. Thank you. And the more I pick, she always say, What's that mean? Good morning. <laughs> Boy, I'm learning Russian, eh, man? Uh, but anyway, some of the most, listen, most of the vacations I've taken, I've, I've, I've decided right now we're going on vacation. So I mean, that when I, when he comes, he's going to take much, other people, some people going to be surprised about him coming. Some people be working, some be driving along, some will be hidden in sin, and just going to surprise you and come back. Wow, he says that there will be some who will not be surprised. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 18. The Bible said, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But of the time and the season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfect that the day of the Lord such cometh as a thief in the night. He said, for when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them, and travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. Shall not escape. But ye, but ye, brother, are not in darkness that day should overtake take you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. <coughs> Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Ah, so it's, it's not only that, but it's, it, it, it is a, a rewarding plea. I see that. There in verse 7 again, he said, 
Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of this prophecy of this book. Blessed. When you keep the word of God in your heart, it's a blessing. God tells us to tell, share the Bible with someone. I love the testimony. I mean, he witnessed to him. He witnessed spread out. I love to hear That's a blessing. Again, what if a uh, brother not told Terry about it? Where would Terry be? Probably working some welding shop to marry him. Come on, I need some money, honey. I'm going to go buy me some more shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you see what happened? You give, give, give. Same you. We need to give and give and give and give. If you could only see the death like I see the death. I wrote a big heart in my church. And I wrote D-E-F. What's that mean? I said, my heart's for the deaf. What about you? Are your heart for the deaf also? Well, I don't want to tell them about my style, but I'm a little bit shy. Or, I don't, maybe you have some hidden sin. You need to get rid of it. Be great. I said, I'm always with you, no matter what happens. Amen. Amen. So he said, his response, he said, my reward, he said, my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. He said, I will give you a reward. I, I, wanna, I, want, I want a crown so big, it might take Terry, brother, and uh, give me, and uh, Sam. I want big man to help me lift every crown and give back to Jesus. That's what I want. Amen. Amen. What about you? He said, I have a reward for you to give. Amen. The reward to give back. And so he says in verse 5, he says, it is now, it's an instructive plea. It's an instructive, <laughs> please tell us, he's telling us. In verse 7 again, worship God. See, we have Christians not worshiping God. Really. We have a lot of Christians not worshiping God. They come to church for what? For honor the pastor. Pastor stay, leaves, people leave saying, mm. Why they come to church? Mm. Not come to worship God, they come to worship man. Mm. Remember, I told you what? Trust Jesus. What? Completely. Completely. Trust man, what? Discreetly. Mm. Amen. And some people do that. Mm. So we need to work. Keep the sayings of the book. Keep it. <laughs> Keep the book in front of the people. The Word of God. Amen? Also, it's a timely, timely time. Current plea, right now, he says, come right now. Time is ready. Short is coming, he said. He says, it's coming in time. He said, the not saved, unsaved, still stay. But the saved is going to go. The saved will go. But the unsaved will stay. That's scary. Scared. You see verse uh, uh, verse 9, he says, verse 9, he says what? He said, then said unto him, See thou do it not, for I am the fellow servant, and thy brother and the prophets, and them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God, worship God. He said in verse 11 again, he says, He that is not saved, let him still be unsaved. God said, Hey, you're not saved when I come. Too bad. Too bad. Be left behind. We're out of here. It'd be awful to come to church some morning. Walk in. Three or four deaf here. Where's the rest of them? I don't know where they are. Where's my pastor? Where's my pastor? Where's my pastor? I don't know where they are. Where's, where's Teresa and Mary? I don't know where they are. Where's David and his wife? I don't know where they are. Gone. Gone. Think you'd be shocked? Yeah. Amen? Wow. So it's not, it's 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 a ID, it's it's identifying. 
complete meaning. God. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God said, I am the beginning and I am the end. Finished. I come quickly. He said, I am the root of David, the bright and morning star. Praise his name. Amen. Amen. Also, I see the last thing I see is an imitation. Imitate. Please, 17, verse 17. Says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. When we preach, we give you an invitation. Come. Come. Many of you have relatives not saved. You need to come and pray for them. Many of you have friends not saved. You need to come and pray for them. Maybe some people not saved. You need to come and get right with God. Maybe you have some hidden sin. You need to come because Jesus said, I come quickly. I come quickly. Huh? He said, he said the spirit and the bride say, come. Come and receive the water of life freely. Amen? That's what he's telling us. I see here one, the word from Jesus, our Savior, reminds us in verse 20, he tells, he which testify these things says, surely I come quickly. And number two, he said, the word from the saved come, he said, there is a desire, there is a desire to depart from this, uh, from in the heart, every born again believer. There is a desire to home bound, ready to go. Are you ready to go home? Amen. Are you really ready to go home? Oh no, no, I, I have too many works to do. Are you ready to go home? We see, we see, we see our government, everything is just falling down. I'm not, I'm not trying to make you scared, but the truth is true. Everything is all together in the Bible. The last thing on God's counter is his coming back for us. Come on. Everything's all prophesied, finished, finished, it's done, finished, half and half. You see, it don't be, will be wars of wars. We have wars all over the all, all over the country. People are going crazy, chopping off people's heads. Man, it's awful. We need to be serious about that. Do you notice verse 21 says, notice the word grace. While we wait, we need to grace to sing us day by day. Grace, grace, one grace. We have that grace through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you truly know Jesus Christ, please hold your hand up. spoke to your heart. God spoke to your heart. I'm not going to delay. You know if the Spirit touched your heart, you need to come. You need to come. I don't want to delay. Force you to come. I want God to make your heart right. You come. I'll give you an invitation right now. You come. Come. God spoke to your heart. You come. God spoke to your heart. And you come. Understand what I'm saying? Let me ask you a question. All of you perfect? No. Oh, get it right. He said, come. Come. Come quickly. Come. Invitation's open. 